Commissioner Neely will give you three minutes. We're going to cap the public comment section um, to an hour. I think we are there. Um, so um, the first Huntersville resident would be Gary Taylor. Mr. Taylor. After that would be Bane Black. And then uh, Todd, is it Carpenter? That, that is the order. So Mr. Taylor, you got there well, uh, my name is Gary Taylor. I live I'm in Bridgeton Lane here in Huntersville, in the Berkdale area. Okay. Uh, and I'm also here to, uh, as a representative for my company, which is based on Baylor Road in Cornelius. Okay, thank you. Uh, very, very glad to hear that you're interested in economic development uh, because that's what I'm here for, too. Okay. Um, started this business here under a different name uh, in the year 2000. I've been coming here for many, many years. I chose this area, Huntersville, and Point Oyster, where I wanted to settle and build my business. In three years, we bought it out. Uh, three years ago, we bought it out. And we've grown about 40% each year. We're now uh, going on our 21st employee. And our business plan over the next five years is to double the size of the business. Um, four, four or five weeks ago, uh, we were getting ready to make an offer on property here uh, to uh, build a building and expand our business. Um, I am here to tell you that I stopped that project and I took a lease on another property just to get us through the next year, and we're gonna wait to see how this toll road thing goes. Um, but if the toll road plan goes forward, we're gonna seriously be taking a hard look at the account. Um, that's not what we wanna do. I love this area. I uh, love, uh, I just had a house in Winfield, of course, and you can go over there too, now you know, but anyway. Um, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great place. It was a long time choice to come here and to settle, put down roots, to start a business. Um, logistics was a very important part of that choice of putting this business. I run a service operation, so I have trucks and vans and whatnot that's got to get around and get to customers. I cover 11 states. I can put my business anywhere, but I chose here. So I'm respectfully asking that you support a resolution in our effort to stop the polar project. Thank you. very much for letting us speak tonight. Uh, I'm Bain Black. I'm a Charlotte native. Uh, I have the unique experience of having lived all over the country. I've lived in uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Arizona, Atlanta, and Los Angeles, two miles from the infamous Highway 91. Uh, that road uh, has gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of publicity. It uh, serves 13 million people traveling from LA to, to Riverside. Uh, we're being compared uh, revenue-wise on our stretch of road that we're supposed to be uh, generating the same amount of revenue that they have out there of it. Impossible. Uh, three minutes is not very long. <laughs> uh, who in their right mind would issue a $600 million contract to a single bidder? Uh, in the business world that I came from, we would never do that. We would go and rewrite the RFP. Uh, especially if it was a firm that whose parent company in Spain has been uh, convicted of, of corruption. Uh, it just doesn't smell right. There's something wrong here and we need to stop it. Um, why did the U.S. contractors back out? Why did we only have this one company from Spain? Uh, and we're going to pay $13 billion over 50 years in tolls. This is wrong. What's wrong with, the, with, the proposed, uh, what's wrong with this proposed solution? Uh, hot lanes ensure congestion. It is uh, in the business model. Why would people be paying to, to travel if there wasn't congestion? So the only way that they could ever survive is if there's congestion. Uh, the, the contract has 50 years, uh, uh, gives away for 50 years, all, uh, already paid for HOV lanes, our right of ways, and our ability to reduce congestion with additional infrastructure. Hot lanes make two classes of drivers ones with money to pay and others struggling to make ends meet. Haven't we seen enough divisive issues in this country in recent years? We should do the right thing and avoid this recessive tax. It is not fair from many, many points of view, not fair to tear down good bridges in Charlotte to add tollway infrastructure. None of the bridges are on the 2,200 uh, bridges that are listed as being uh, deficient in the state. Not fair to spend the bulk of the construction money, $400 million worth in downtown Charlotte area, when the problem lies Huntersville North. Uh, it's not fair to, uh, it's not fair 
for late Norman citizens who have paid taxes and watched patiently as other areas uh, uh, receive transportation uh, uh, solutions. Uh, and here we are uh, patiently still waiting, and now we're told we get, a, we get uh, HFT lanes. Uh, it's the money issue. Here we are being told that there's no money, and in the same breath, our, our governor turns around and says that there's a $244 million project for a bypass in Asheboro. Asheboro? Come on. Buddy. Sorry, sir, your time is up. Thank you. Please, please help us. Keep it short and brief. I'm a Huntersville resident as well as the representing Champion Tire and Wheels, located up on 115. Got over 30 tractor trailers that we send to the racetrack each week, as well as a few local deliveries. We go to Mooresville, we come to Huntersville, we go to Concord. Uh, we don't really need the lane to Charlotte. Uh, the big trucks are allowed in the toll lanes anyway. I just voice my concern. For supporting the toll lanes, which doesn't seem to benefit the local economy. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. more than the people who travel 77 each day for work, myself included. We spend hours and hours each week sitting in traffic, missing time at home with our families. But we recognize the responsibility that we have to ourselves and future generations to construct a plan that will not only benefit us in our lifetime, but theirs as well. This project with the company who has a history of failed toll projects is not that plan. This project that our tax money is helping to fund will end up costing us millions more in the long run in lost economic revenue and wasteful expenses. For the next 50 years, we will never see an additional general purpose lane added to 77 in our area without paying millions of dollars to Central first. To put this in perspective, my son is almost two years old now. He will be an adult with his own grown children by the time this contract is over. That is a long time with no options. I heard the saying that something is better than nothing. In this case, nothing is better than something when that something prevents us from improving 77 for the next 50 years at the expense of taxpayers. This project is not what our area deserves, and most importantly, it will not relieve congestion. We are asking you as our elected officials to please hear your citizens and pass this resolution so that state leaders will take action. We are asking you to consider the implications that this will have on our economy and our community. Do you truly believe that for 50 years, this will be the best option to improve congestion? Do you truly believe that this is the only option? If you do believe that, then I encourage you to attend one of the community or business information sessions that are being held, and you will find that we do have options, but we need your support to make them reality. My last request, request to you is to consider this. If we allow this incredibly restrictive contract to go through, and the toll project inevitably fails at relieving congestion, what other options will we have during the next 50 years to fix it? Hi, Madam Mayor, Commissioners. We have heard over and over that Huntersville is expecting exponential growth. Uh, three weeks ago, I heard Dr. Mueller he is the Senior Vice President of Novant Health, Greater Charlotte um, Region. And speaking to their plans to increase the present hospital at Exit 23 from a 60 beds to 150 beds, with all of the medical parks associated with that. I just don't know how not having an ingress or egress at Exit 23 is going to help this project. It, it has taken me 23 minutes to get five miles to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. At a DOT session at the Mecklenburg, um, uh, North Mecklenburg High School, they could not answer any of my questions. At that point, I was milling around and spoke with Bill Cox, and he said the DOT does not want 
the local people to use 77. And they have plans to widen 21 and 115. Well, the problem with that is it will cost three to four times as much to widen those roads. And it will take 10 to 15 years. And I added the 10 just in case I misunderstood him. I thought he said 15 or more. They have to acquire land and they have to change and move utilities. Also, in February of 13, at one of the very beginning meetings, uh, a transportation meeting, the representative from Parsons Brenmerhoff was there. And he said, quote, unquote, and at this point I'm taking detailed notes, this project will not <coughs> decrease congestion. It will give those willing to pay a congestion-free experience. The problem is, Huntersville will not even have the opportunity to pay. We will not be able to get on or off at exit 23. We will not get, be able to get on or off at 25. I don't know how this is going to help our businesses, let alone our local people. Thank you for considering a bill um, to reject the tolls. Don't forget to say your name and address for the record. Okay. James Snyder from uh, 16508 Highway 73 in Huntersville. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to uh, quickly. Yeah, you can back up a little bit. Okay. There you go. Testing. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I just want to let my voice quickly be heard. Um, as residents of Huntersville, uh, we elected our town government to represent the citizens. And um, the people have overwhelmingly spoke out against these tolls, which most of us can't afford and the tolls that are not designed to even relieve congestion. So I hope you'll hear our voices. And then also, finally, I wanted to touch on uh, you know, the topic of uh, growing our community. I hear a lot about growing the community, perhaps even uh, developing a new Exit 27, uh, developing the Augusta Lee property into a new Burkdale-style development. And uh, personally, I would love to see a great new you know, development for our community. But if this contract goes forward, for the next 50 years, we'll be stuck with just two general purpose lanes in each direction on 77 and a toll lane that most of us can't afford. That would mean, of course, a guaranteed traffic nightmare for the next 50 years. And uh, that would also mean that growing our community, unfortunately, would become irresponsible at that point because um, we wouldn't have the infrastructure to support future growth. Uh, that would be a sad thing. So please, let's just do the right thing here and uh, listen to the people. Thank you. Madam Mayor, the board, if I could see by time to Mr. John Hamler. He was not here yet when we had to sign in. And uh, if you'd like to speak, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Um, actually, okay, we can do that because we that just... That was the last time. Yeah, you were the last time or so. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Mr. Wetmore, if you could uh, state your name and address for the record. Yeah. We're, we're capping it three minutes. That's fine. Uh, John Hepler, 7316 Swansea Lane, Cornelius. Also here to speak for uh, Commissioner Jim Bucket, uh, who could not be here due to the prior occasion. Um, I think really, the, you know, we've all been through different events like this a certain time when the community gets charged. And as the owner of Payroll Plus in the Lake Norman community, I can tell you one thing that's clear. There has been a sea change in the last 30 to 60 days. Maybe it's because the business owners we're not paying attention. Maybe we had a lot of confidence in our elected leadership. But I think what is pretty common and pretty noticeable is that there have been enough things that have changed over the last 60 days or 90 days. You know, some people say it hasn't changed. We debate all that. But the bottom line is today, this is not something that is one of our change. And I think the bigger picture is just that that when a community speaks up, that it is important for the commissioners and the elected leadership to really take notice and take stock and say, we are here to serve the leadership. And as, as an owner of Payroll Plus, I can tell you, uh, I spend my day, day in, day out, talking to the business leaders of this community. And as many of you know, I was the 2009 chairman of the Lake Norman Chamber, so I've been pretty involved for many years with this community. And I can tell you, there has been a significant difference in the last 60, 30 to 90 days versus the prior year. With that being said, I will end my remarks and I will uh, read what Mr. Uh, 
Puckett asked me to give you a few tonight, which is in a similar vein. And his comments were this. This is not just a resolution asking for an alternative to the tolls. It is much broader. This is a referendum on the future of the moderate to large business community in our region. Either our board stand with us, and Cornelius and Davidson uh, do, or they stand against this community. If our elected officials not at least take a stand to send the message that we want an alternative, then we cannot trust that they will stand up for us the next time when needed. I, for one, will not support anyone who will simply roll over or give up because the odds are against them. The real leaders do not take the temperature. They determine the temperature. As for me, again, these are Mr. Puckett's words, I want to be known as a thermometer, a thin, fragile instrument. I do not want to be known as a thermometer, a thin, fragile instrument shoved up a posterior to gauge what's going on, <laughs> but a thermostat that makes that mach the machine give me the environment the people want. Now, for those of you who all know Jim Puckett, those are obviously his words. <laughs> but the message is the same. It's, it's a much bigger than Joel's, but I can honestly say there has been a sea change that I have seen significant. I, for one, have stood on the sidelines for the last couple of years, knowing, having trust in my elected leadership. Mm -hmm. But I've seen enough of the changes recently that have caused me to head in this direction. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Gilroy. And then uh, I have, is this Dr. Gilroy? It is. It's, it says here, take two, Dahlia. We would say more than that. In, uh, in addition to the five I have before the meeting, I'm just kidding. Um, you're next, sir, and then Judy Cole, okay? Yes, Steve, go ahead. Steve, 221 Chapel Road. Um, basically, I was so disheartened by this company. I teach Spanish, and I research this company in detail, and I have court documents showing how incredibly corrupt it is that I decided to write a letter to the World Bank, the Vice President of Integrity, and I will hide his name, but his name is, say, I'll say, Mr. Thompson. Please ban Ferrovial. This is the memo line. Sintra, CESPA, I-77 Mobility Partners, and all of Ferrovial subsidiaries from bidding on any World Bank contracts. Also use your cross Department Act for bans at African Development Bank, Inter-American Bank, and all other banks in your multilateral agreement. Dear Mr. Thompson, I'm writing to you because you are a crusader against bribery, corruption, especially the bribery of politicians for public contracts. I have discovered through Spanish court documents and Spanish newspapers, I teach at a local university, that the Spanish company Ferrovial, um, which is a partner with SNC Lavalin's partners on that 407 ETR contract. And they basically, if you know any background about it, um, SNC Lavalin was banned for 10 years for all contracts with the World Bank and all the multilateral banks in the area. So this is important. And the key thing that I meant, want to mention to him is on April 17, 2013, you announced to the world that SNC Lavalin Incorporated, this is Citrus partner, and over 100 of its subsidiaries have been banned from bidding on any World Bank funded projects for a period of 10 years. This was due to SNC Lavalin's misconduct. But what was, what was important was your ban was so far reaching that it included the SLI 407 East Development Group. Now this is directly, this is Sintra. This was a joint venture with Sintra 50-50. So the Javier Tamargo was the CEO right in conjunction with this group right there in Toronto. Your message was powerful and extraordinary in the battle against corruption because subsidiaries were not spared by the bribery and corruption of their parent companies. Ironically, just two months after the War World Bank's announcement, Ferrovial, Central's parent, was accused in one of the largest cases of bribery and corruption of political officials in Barcelona's history. And I go on to document it, and I have included in a PDF file, 37 page court document by um, an attorney um, Emilio Sanchez Rivera from the Anti-Corruption Organized Crime Division. I sent that over to him. Um, and basically, finally, on May 28, 2050, all the major Spanish newspapers announced the judge's conviction against Ferrovio. He concluded that Ferrovio was responsible for paying millions of dollars in kickbacks to the CDC. 
Um, and then I go on to announce all the other bribery and corruption of officials all over the world. And I finally said, Mr. McCarthy, I am so disappointed with some of our local politicians as well as our Governor McCrory and Senator Tom Tillis. Please send a message to the world that companies like Ferroville are basically Spain's Enron. And they should be excluded from government contracts since they bribe politicians and falsify documents. Um, and I'm, I've given him tons of information. I'm going to be working directly with him. And I'm I know sorry, Sarah McCarthy voted. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, Dr. Mike Miltick, 1802 1 Cornelius. I am a physician. I listen, I assess data, and then I give an opinion. When I ran for Cornelius office two years ago, this whole option was not on ours. I was aware of it. I mean, we were all told that it was going to be 20 years to get job purpose lanes, but boy, we could speed that up if we set 50 years of tolls. And that sounded somewhat acceptable. I mean, you use it, you pay for it. But things have changed. I've learned more and more about the actual implementation of this tolling. It doesn't make sense. Uh, I, you, you're traveling down at uh, Express, I hate calling it Express Lane because it's a toll lane. And you've got to merge the two general purpose lanes through people that have been bumper to bumper for 60 yeah. minutes to get to your exit. There's going to be bondo between those bumpers. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work. You learn about the company. You learn about the financing. This is not right on so many levels. And then, the whole reason we were told it was 20 years is because the equitable distribution format went away. We now have STI. But DOT refuses to rank us because it's already funded by tolls. So that's changed. And now McCrory, well, we were told there was no option of selling bonds for infrastructure. Well, now that's changed. So I say, really? You're still supporting this? When everything, all the assumptions have changed, it's time to drop back. Mm -hmm. it's, we asked for a timeout. I thought that was very appropriate. Have an independent review of the contract. DOT is, in, is engaging part of the income stream, so their numbers could be suspect. If you and I, as elected officials, I'm not elected officials, but as a physician, if I have a, an obvious conflict of interest, I have to declare it. Mm -hmm. DOT is getting part of the income stream. Shouldn't those numbers be suspect? Shouldn't there be an independent source or all that data just to confirm that the numbers aren't being cooked? Just thank you. Just saying. Thank you very much. Uh, 2009 Cornelius. When we moved here in 95, we moved to Huntersville. We lived here for about 12 years, just recently moved to Cornelius. And you know, we were happily getting along in our little life. And I remember when we were looking at houses up here, we moved to Cedarfield. And our realtor said, We moved here from Chicago, the land of big traffic. And our realtor said, Oh, this is going to be great. By 2010, this road we're on right now is going to be eight lanes. There's going to be four lanes on each side. So, wow, that's pretty good. Well, I don't know what, what realtor it was talking about that. Last I heard, I think they promised three on each side several years back. But where's the money? Like I, where's our money? We've been paying gas tax for how long? There have been no improvements since I've lived here. I've lived here almost 20 years. There's, everything's the same. 77 is no bigger than Catawba Avenue by my house. It's the same road, except we're moving, we're not moving out here. We can't, we can't go anywhere. I'm to the point now where I'm trying to sell my business because my customers um, have children with special needs and they can't handle the kids in the car with this traffic. They can't, it's impossible. Um, so hopefully by, the end of the week I've got somebody that can help me out with that but it's really ridiculous we're looking to leave the area it's a big shame because we love it but the quality of life that we have right now I can't go visit my grandson because it's a 90 minute drive just to get to Charlotte you know when we all moved here we were 20 minutes from each other my 20 minute drive is now 90 minutes and it really stinks and I don't think this contract with Sintra should be able to hold water. It's not good for any of us. And I, I'm surprised that people voted for it to begin with because 50 years is forever. 
you know, and to stifle us with what we have now for 50 more years, because I can't drive in a toll lane. We can't afford 20 bucks round trip. My husband can't pay that because that's a car payment each month for us. We'd be nice to get a car, but you know, that's the way it is. I mean, it really stinks. I don't know who thought it was a great idea, but even if there's, I'd rather have no lane than a toll lane. So. After you, sir, we will have um, I have, uh, oh, I have, sorry, I have uh, Mac McAlpine. Super. That's, that's it. Okay. Yeah, Blue Candor? Yeah. yeah. You're, on the, you're on the front. I'm on the second page. Oh, thank you. Yeah. If you right. signed it, I've got you. Okay, right. I just haven't called you yet. My name is Vince Weingartner with the North Cross Master Association. I'm at 9718 Sanford Road. Um, you heard a lot of reasons why you should dislike the toll lanes tonight. I agree with 100% of it. Um, the other thing that concerns me about this bad deal is uh, we have, we were talked into a bonus of 144 million, originally 150 some million. I'm not even sure it's still at 144 million. But uh, anyway, that's uh, the most recent line that I heard. 144 million bonus dollars, and that was to encourage you folks to go along with this and accept it uh, as part of the program. And uh, during the most recent CRTPO uh, allocation of that. I see that uh, Huntersville did get some bonus allocation to take this project. 3.5 million for US 21 Gilead, uh, 5 million for NC 15 two-way pair, uh, and then uh, Torrance Creek Tributary Greenway on I-77 between 23 and 25. And then 37 million for, what's this? Uh, 37 million for a toll lane access road to help the private toll lane operator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how that helps us, yeah. or why you allowed that to happen, but it did. And, and I thought, okay, 37 million, that's bad enough out of 144. But then I see Charlotte's allowed 40 million out of our bonus money to go to this, uh, for the exact same thing, a, a direct access for the totaling operator. This is a bad deal. And uh, this board, if they were looking out for our community and our citizens, you would have recognized that some time ago, and this latest travesty of how the bonus money is going to be used would have been stopped as well. But it didn't happen. I'm hoping uh, tonight, since you haven't fought for us in the past, that tonight you allow us to fight for ourselves. We've been working very hard for two and a half years to stop this project, to educate you folks on the downside of it. And we haven't been heard. But we need a resolution from you folks tonight to give us the strength carry forward and stop this total if you are going to be unwilling to do it uh, as you have done. Thank you very much. My name is Annette Powell. I'm from Cornelius and I'm Baltic Drive and I really want to thank the opportunity to speak. I did call Sarah McCauley today and was hung up on when I tried to tell her how it would affect the Huntersville community. So I have no choice but to be here and explain what I would say to the rest of you. The feeder roads, I, I lived in LA for 18 years. And when traffic gets heavy, people get off the freeways. They're like little ants. They find ways to go. Not just people, but taxis. Uh, buses that go from for the airport they they find other ways to go and on the way here i saw how many homes in huntersville would not be able to get out during rush hour traffic we see this in cornelius all the time but you're now starting to see it here it's not going to get any better and take a look at Texas. They've had tolls for about 10 years. Their people are incensed. There are three lawsuits across the country. There's one in Virginia, Texas, and um, Washington for use for the coal, coal companies, not even necessarily Sintra, that they are gouging and misusing their privilege to charge and collect fines. We have zero control over what Senator is going to do with this contract after the first six months. There is no cap. There 
there's no control over how they're going to use the data that they're going to be getting from the highway when they took, take their license plates. Some of you may have some things you want to protect, like your family, etc. Who can hack into that and get that information to learn your routine, as well as others? And you have to believe that Charlotte is a target. I do not believe that NCDOT has been faithful or has been truthful with us to sign this contract and then go in the next week put out a $244 million contract to Asheboro for a seasonal problem. When we have people who pay taxes every day going to work, is above the $200 million cap that supposedly we are now under, so that's why they can't give us two general purpose lanes that studies have shown we needed at the latest by 2010. Please do your duty to the citizens, to the future, and resolve to defund this project. It isn't going to work, and Texas is telling that right now because they're putting through legislation to halt any more tolls, and there's actual leg legislation they're working on to get rid of all of them. Thank you. Mr. Noss, then Mr. Is it McMahon or McMahon? McMahon. McMahon. I apologize. Mayor <clears throat> Swain, Commissioner, staff, thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. You may have heard the reason why we have to resort to the state your name and address for the My name is Kurt Knox. I live in 1940. Thank you. You may have heard the reason why we have to resort to the Poland in the first place is because we do not have enough money. NCDOT has been saying that there are $70 billion in road needs and we have only $11 billion to fund them. I would like to tell you what they included in those $70 billion road needs. $6.4 billion for toll lanes. $717 million to add a new four-lane road from Lenore, population 19,000, to Tarboro, population 11,000. Widening US 401 from Fayetteville to Wilmington at a cost of over $500 million. Uh, there's a need to, for a new four-lane road from Kingston, population 22,000, to Wilson, population 50,000, at a cost of $464 million. And finally, my favorite, $306 million to widen North Carolina 33 between Grimesland, population 400, to Aurora, population 505. I could go on, but clearly you wow. get the point. What we have here instead is a confusion between what are wants and what are needs. I don't know about your financial situation, but my financial situation is if I don't have enough money, I get really good at prioritizing what I can spend my money on. The way the state prioritizes money is through STI. Uh, in, a July, in a June 9th memo, Deputy Secretary Tennyson, and he is here with us this evening, stated that no section of I-77 north of Charlotte would score high enough under this STI uh, or fall within the corridor cap to be funded ahead of the I-77 express lines in Charlotte. Let's talk a little bit about what goes into that score for those I-77 north lanes. Uh, there's one project, I-4758 AB, uh, that is included right now at STI. It assumes there are six lanes from Cornelius to Mooresville. As a result, it divides four lanes of traffic into six total lanes and it comes up with a capacity utilization of 70%. In other words, according to NCDOT, they could add another 30,000 cars on I-77 and it would still not be congested. When you have input like that, you have results like this. 118 highway projects have a higher congestion score than widening I-77 through Lake Norman. 171 highway projects have a greater impact on economic competitiveness than widening I-77 through Lake Norman. This despite the fact that I-77 has the highest per lane tra traffic density of any interstate in North Carolina. And Norfolk Southern just completed a $90 million multimodal uh, facility at the nation's sixth busiest airport. Indeed, widening I-77 through Lake Norman is less economically competitive than putting a direct access to the Asheville Zoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> NCMP, according to this analysis, says that 698 highway projects have a greater travel time benefit than widening I-77 <coughs> through Lake Harbor. I'm sorry, sir, your time is up. Can we allow him just a couple minutes more? Okay. Good evening, 
and Madam Mayor and the town commissioners, appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. My name is Tom McMahon. I live at 110 Rio Vista Drive in Mooresville. I'm a local business owner in the Cornelius area. I've been in the area for about 25 years. Of those air years, I've worked 18 years in the commercial real estate business solely. I helped Mr. Russell start our Lake Norman Economic Development Corporation here years ago. I was the chairperson of that effort. I have helped hundreds, hundreds of businesses come to this area. And I am very sad to say that I am starting to see, because of all of this issue, and because what seems to be without uh, our citizens' approval, an effort to do some unjust to us. I am now seeing businesses reconsider what they're doing and where they are going. I don't want to be a commercial real estate person that is benefiting from moving people away from this community. I've helped build this community, and I'd like to be able to continue to do that. This I-77 toll project is counterproductive to our region. It is killing our citizens, our family, our friends. I'm very, very disturbed by this project. I do ask that you folks support this group that is here tonight. I please ask for that help. Um, I was very proud to bring businesses to this region. <coughs> I now have to make sure I have full disclosure. It's like if you have you know, something that needs to be fixed on your home, and you have to disclose it to a buyer, we, we better disclose what's going on, which it's hard not to disclose this. Property values are gonna diminish, diminish both commercial and residential. Jobs are diminishing. My son, a 20-year-old entrepreneur, owns a lawn business. He's owned it for seven years. He no longer will come south of exit 28 to take on new contracts because if he gets stuck in traffic, he has to pay his employees while they sit in traffic. It's non-productive for him. It's a shame. Young entrepreneurs, we're putting them in a hardship situation. Other businesses are being put in hardship. The park business park, which is in your community, <clears throat> has been beneficial to this area. We will see changes in economic development. We spoke earlier of economic development and great news. I love hearing that, I love hearing it. But we will hear the opposite if this problem continues the way it is. I ask again that this board does something about this, that this board shows support to the citizens of Huntersville and also helps our region because we are a regional and you are a regional board if you would. We've always felt that way. That's why we started a Lake Norman Economic Development Corporation. Okay. So I'm sorry your time is up. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. You're on. And then I have Mr. McAlpine. And last one, is it Ray Duncan? Very good, thank you. My name is Nils Lucander. I live in Davidson, North Carolina. And I'd just like to mention, uh, talk about some loyalty. Controversy in the public arena is nothing new. Such issues involve one group of citizens opposing and debating actions of another group of citizens. But things are different here. This is possibly the most lopsided controversy any of us have ever seen. There is no battle between two groups of people. There is no debate between pro-toll citizens and anti-toll citizens. This battle is between citizens and their government, mm -hmm. including some of you seated here before us. In contentious issues like amnesty, abortion, overseas wars, Opposing public opinion is separated by only a few percentage points. A 20% difference is considered a landslide. By comparison, when citizens whose lives are affected by I-77 are told, over 90% oppose the toll aids. When there is such an overwhelming mandate for one side of an issue, government officials are obligated to capitulate. Why? Because they were chosen to represent the community, not be masters over it. But this tolling issue has some elected officials ignoring the will of the people and pressing some other agenda. One would think these elected officials would align themselves with such massive support for a position, but not here, even though two counties, four towns, and 90% of the people affected requested a delay or halt the process. What type of government does the town of Huntersville represent or encourage? One that represents the people, or one that ignores its people, allows for threats of neglect by outsiders, 
or bullying and arrogance has been the case with these bullies. There is no justification <coughs> for elected leaders to ignore the vast majority of citizens. How roads are funded and built is a policy issue. The citizens affected have every right to influence what direction this issue will go, or stop what they find is unacceptable. If this issue were placed on a ballot, we all know the tollings would be dead. Mm -hmm. This tolling contract is bizarre, it's corrupt, and it's dysfunctional. The best case scenario is it offers for us is to pay the highest premium with excessive restrictions and yet provide only the least amount of congestion relief. With all that is known about the players, the process, and the expected results, how anyone can approve this is beyond reason. These toll lanes force us into shackles and limit future options for alternate travel. What representative would sign such a contract or be unwilling to stop it? Certainly not one that represents or respects the citizens. We call upon our elected officials to solve problems in ways that are respectful and considerate, to develop transportation solutions that spread the costs and benefits fairly. We call upon them to stop making excuses, passing the buck, or saying nothing can be done. No more threatening that we will suffer additional years of neglect. The people have spoken, we do not accept toll lanes. We recognize that the government of Huntersville has a limited voice, but it is still a very important voice. It represents over 50,000 Huntersville citizens and affects hundreds of thousands of other neighboring citizens. Thank you. Place, Cornelius, North Carolina. Uh, I've been there for about four years. I grew up in Mooresville. I went to a Brawley Middle School, Mount Warren Elementary. Uh, grew up down Brawley School Road, and my parents moved off of Brawley in 1978 because the traffic was so bad. So it's in my genes to absolutely hate congestion. That's why I'm here. Uh, I'm a fifth, uh, well, Five generations ago, John Robert McAlpin I graduated from Davidson College. Uh, he was a Presbyterian preacher. Uh, we've had a lot of preachers up here today. Uh, I put together a nice business summit at Michael Waltrip. We had about 150 business professionals come at a four-day notice. They're obviously very concerned about this issue. Uh, I've got 170 signatures from local uh, business owners, people such as Cotton Ketchy, uh, CFOs and CEOs from local companies. Uh, we are very well represented as far as the business community and what this project is going to do to our economy. So, granted, Huntersville is in probably the best situation with 485. You know, if you have any logistical needs, you happen to have an out. You know, Cornelius and Davidson are very unfortunate. They do not have an out. They have no option. Uh, so. Very fortunately, we heard a few facts from the DOT, and I'd just like to uh, read through a few of those. Um, canceling the contract is feasible, and it saves money, despite the DOT's short-sighted claims. Uh, and canceling the contract will n would not slow the widening of I-77 with general purpose lanes, unless the DOT chooses to obstruct the widening of the interstate with general purpose lanes. And I'm happy to debate that fact. The local officials were misled, given two options uh, of widening with tolls or nothing for 25 years. Uh, that's that's very untrue and honestly quite a big lie. Uh, you owe a lot of people here an apology, um, myself included. And uh, I certainly hope the board chooses to support these businesses. Uh, your financial stability and the ability to attract more business is directly related to this. Uh, I'm not making it up. There's a uh, economic impact analysis that was done for I-95. The state paid for it. There was no economic impact analysis done for I-77 in these toll lanes. It was not done. So, you know, I, I'm not preaching to the choir, but no one can dispute any of my claims because they have no information. It doesn't exist. Now, I would hate, I would love to be wrong, but unfortunately, I can't be too wrong right now. So, so thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ray Duncan from Warsaw, North Carolina. 
Uh, I think everyone here can agree that I-77 is a critical piece of the public infrastructure for both the citizens and the businesses here in Lake Norman. And with that in mind, I want to address two pieces of rhetoric that I hear much too frequently. The first is that we, if we build general purpose lanes, they're just going to fill up again in five years. Let me reframe that concept for you. Can you think of any other piece of public infrastructure we would say that about? Are public schools too overcrowded? Why expand them? They're just going to fill up again. Water and sewer pipes can't support the growth in the area. We won't build more because they're just going to get used. Now, I have seen firsthand how much this area has grown in the last 20 years. And I can guarantee you that we do not have the same number of public classrooms or the same number of water pipes as we did 20 years ago. Now, the second thing I hear too often is the concept of choices. Now, over and over again, we hear that tolling will provide choices um, for people who drive in this area. Well, we have I-77, we have 21, we have 115 already, so those aren't new choices. The only new choice being provided is the choice to pay a toll to a private Spanish company, in addition to the taxes we already pay, to bypass the public highway that should have been widened with our tax dollars already on toll lanes subsidized by more state tax dollars than it would cost to just build the free lanes. Now, if you called 911 and the operator told you, I can't get an emergency responder out there for 30 minutes, unless you want to pay a fee, which will determine at the time, in which case I can get you there for five minutes. <laughs> would anybody put up with that? No. Or, what about our overcrowded public classrooms? If I told you that every public classroom had 40 students in it, you think, hey, that's overcrowded. But now imagine if I told you that for a fee, I'll take your child out of that overcrowded classroom and put it in a public classroom with five students in it. Now, that doesn't seem very fair for a public classroom, does it? But don't forget, we're not building more public classrooms. So 10 years down the road, now we have 50 students in that overcrowded classroom and five in that other public classroom they have to pay for, but the fees keep going up because more people are desperate to get their kids out of those overcrowded classrooms. Now let's think about 20 years down the road. Are there 60 kids in each of those public classrooms? We don't know, because you know what's gonna happen? People are gonna get fed up and they're going to leave, because the system has broken down. Now, would a single commissioner in this room endorse a plan where your children never get another public classroom? Would you approve a plan where your police, fire, or ambulance response times are determined by someone can pay you a fee when they call? People would riot if that happened. So why would we do that to our public interstate? The Department of Transportation said for years the only choice we had to widen I-77 was through toll lanes. Now I want you to tell them and our state officials that you want to make a different choice. Pass a resolution to stop the toll lanes tonight and start working towards a solution that's going to actually benefit the public in the Lake Norman area. So I'm sorry your time is up. Thank you. I appreciate it.